Hey everyone, it's Dustin Nolf with Keller Williams Realties, the Dustin Nolf team and Full House LLC, Pittsburgh Property Management. How are we all doing today? So today we're going to talk about credit cards. So as part of our wealth building episodes, we're going to talk about credit cards. And you may think, well, why are we talking about credit cards if we're talking about wealth building? Doesn't Dave Ramsey say that we don't, we shouldn't have any debt? Um, well, maybe. Um, there's several different, well, maybe two major mindsets on wealth building and the creation of wealth and income. And there's, uh, you know, a lot of people have a mindset of you got you got to be debt free in order to have wealth, and that's not necessarily the case. So there is, you know, if you follow Robert Kiyosaki. Um, there is the mindset of debt creates wealth also. So there's two different mindsets here that we're talking about. We're going to be looking at the debt is good mindset today. And we're going to look at how um, you can use credit cards to your advantage. So stick around. Before we get started, uh, give this video a thumbs up if you like the content, please. Uh, subscribe below. There's a button that says subscribe on it that you can click on and then there's a bell that'll pop up and you want to turn notifications on. Uh, I'm doing two to four videos a week so you get a lot of good content coming out there. If you like uh, what's going on in this video you're going to be able to see two to four of these videos every week. So uh, there's links below as well. So there's links uh, for books that have helped me along the way. So if you're looking you know, specifically for books um, around wealth building there's some links below that are you, you can use. Um, I would highly recommend if you haven't read the Four Hour Work Week. The Four Hour Work Week is a great book. Um, I'm just going to show you about time leverage and how you can think differently about your dollars per hour, and um, how do you how to use uh, people people leverage to gain time leverage, right? Where you're going to be able to gain time and get paid more per hour that you're working. Um, so then you can use your time for things that you want to do, or if you want to make more money in your time, you have the ability to do that. Um, so check out that book. There's a link below for that. Uh, I am going to put a link for this um, mic in here as well. I've had a lot of people asking me what microphone I'm using. And it may look fancy, but it, it you know was extremely affordable and it works very well. So anybody who's interested, I'm going to have a, a link for this mic below as well. So, uh, so let's get rolling. So credit cards. Why are credit cards good? Um, I'm going to open with, I guess, a story about credit cards and how I kind of realized that I could use them to my advantage. Um, and this goes back to, man, it must have been 2003 or 2004, maybe 2005, somewhere around there. Um, I don't remember what I was trying to do, but I kind of realized that I didn't have a credit score and that I wanted to build up my credit score. And um, I think I was getting ready to buy a house. So I... Um, that would have been my first home. I bought it in 2006. And what I did was I was, uh, I'm a musician, kind of people, a lot of people don't know that, but I play guitar and a bunch of other instruments, but guitar mainly. And at that time, I opened a, a credit card up and it was my first credit card ever. And what I figured was I am going to use this credit card to build my credit create a good credit score so then I could go out and get you know my house um, so I got this credit card and it had this introductory like if you sign up for this credit card you can buy stuff with it and you won't have any interest rate for like a year I think it was and I thought man that's pretty cool so I could buy something and I'm not paying any interest on it for a year so I'm pretty much getting this thing that I could pay like 50 bucks a month on or whatever. It's almost like doing a layaway, but I get the I get the thing right now, right? So I thought that was pretty neat and I thought it was a good idea, a good way for me to build my credit score. So I went and I bought this cool guitar amp that I wanted and it cost me like 550 bucks I think it was, and I put it on that credit card and you know when when you the those uh, introductory rates a lot of times it'll be like 3% is your upfront charge. And then you have 0% interest for a year. So you're only paying a 3% fee in order to like pay this thing off for a year until you really start getting that 22% interest or whatever the crazy interest is on after it kicks in. Um, 
So I used this thing to buy this guitar amplifier, and then I paid like 50 bucks a month or something like that. It took me almost a year to pay it off, and I ended up paying it off, and we were good to go. And then the next thing I know, like, as soon as it's paid off, a couple months later, I get like a thing saying, your, you know, your credit limit has gone up. So they like me now. They want me to spend more money, so they give me more money to spend. Um, and then shortly after that, I ended up applying for a loan for my home, and I got a, a loan. My credit score was like 750 or something like that. It was pretty high. So <clears throat> that's one example of why you would want to use a credit card. If you don't use credit at all, you're not going to have a credit history. So like if you want to buy a house with a mortgage or something like that, you're not going to have, if you don't have a credit history, you can't do it. You can't buy a car with a loan, nothing with a loan, basically. So, and in this day and age, like for most people, you know, I, I don't want to know what the median income is, but I think it's somewhere in like the 40s for an individual person. If you're making $40,000 a year and you want to buy a house, the average house home value in America is like 230, I think right now, $230,000. So it's going to take you a long time to save up to buy that house with cash. So in most instances, people are using mortgages to buy homes and cars and things like that. So if you don't have a credit score, you're not going to be able to buy that stuff. So it kind of gives you, if you make sure you have a credit score, you're going to have a boost, right? You're going to have, uh, you're going to be able to get some of that stuff sooner than if you're just trying to pay for everything with cash. So that's like step number one is why, why you'd want to use a credit card is build up your credit score. Now, and the thing is, like D Dave Ramsey talks about not having any debt whatsoever. It depends on the person. Like if you have no self-control and like you're addicted to shopping, then you should not have a credit card. You probably should not get a credit card. You need to get your mind right before you get a credit card. Um, if you're like a consumer, if you're just like born and bred to be a consumer, then you shouldn't have credit cards because what the consumer does is they get a credit card and then they buy dumb stuff with it that they're not there's no strategic thinking whatsoever it's just like i want that i want that i want that and then they buy it and then they're paying 15 to 25 percent interest on that product that they didn't need in the first place and uh you know they bought it because they want it was a want it wasn't a need there was no strategy behind it and then they end up paying like eight times what that thing actually would have cost because they're they're financing it with ridiculous interest rates so that's that's where you want to stay away from credit cards right so the second thing we're going to look at as far as credit cards go it's the same sort of idea but it's how you can accelerate your debt pay down by using credit cards and i was just talking to my sister about this the other day and um my sister, you know, is kind of she's skeptical about it because she said, "Well, how do you do that if you have a 22% a interest rate?" Well, you got to watch. You got to pay attention to what those credit cards are offering you. If you use your credit card all the time and you keep it like close to maxed out, and you're not paying it off, they're not going to give you those offers, right? You're going to get those offers if you're paying your credit card off. So if you got a zero balance on there and it's just sitting at zero for a couple months, then they start sending you offers because they want you to spend money. So our society and the business structure of everything right now is set up to keep you in debt. As long as you're in debt, you owe money and you're, you, I mean, you'll be running the rat race to pay that money off to people. So it's, it's like uh, slavery. It's a new form of slavery, basically. If you get into debt too much, then you're going to be constantly working for somebody else. That's all there is to it. Those, those credit offers that come in, they only come in if you have a zero balance or a low, low, a low balance and you don't max out your credit card and keep it maxed out. And that's a bad idea if you're doing that. Um, you want to pay your credit card off every month if you're using it and you want to use it for dumb things. Like if you want to build your credit, you put a tank of gas on it once a month and then when you get the statement, you pay it off or you pay it down to like a $5 um, balance. And then that makes the credit agency report it faster so you can build your credit faster. But you only, only want to have a balance for a short period of time. So what we're going to look at is how you can accelerate debt pay down with a credit card. All right. So here is an example. Let's say you have $5,000 in student loans and we're going to say that you're paying like 200 bucks a month on it. So we're paying $200 a month on this $5,000. And let's say we have, you know, we're going to say an 8% interest rate on those student loans. So here, here's what you want to look at is you look at what your interest rates are and how you can 
get those high interest things paid down first. Okay, so if you got a whole bunch of debt, let's say you got two student loans and one's at a 3% interest rate and the other one's at an 8% interest rate, you want to pay off that 8% interest rate one first because you're paying it interest over the years. You pay off, you pay so much into interest, it's ridiculous. So you want to pay it down, you get those high interest rate ones paid down first, okay? So when you look at it, like the rate of inflation is somewhere around like two and a half percent, give or take, you know, a couple points. So when you look at um, the, the rate of inflation, like you ideally want to have your interest rates down around the rate of inflation if you can do that, because that means that like, it, it, for instance, when I bought my car, I got a 1% interest rate on it. If I'm paying a 1% interest rate on the car and the rate of inflation is 2.5%, then it's almost like I'm getting paid to buy that car. And that, that may not make a whole lot of sense to, to some of you, but the idea is that the value of money goes down over time. And that's, what it, that's how inflation works. Is like Your money's worth less over time. So if I can pay for that car later, I'm paying less for that car, right? The longer I can string it out at that 1% interest rate. And then the other idea is if you can get an investment that's paying you, for instance, you can get an investment that's paying you an 8% return as opposed to paying off a debt that's, that's, that's charged a 5% return, like get the investment first and have the investment pay for that the debt, okay? Because you're, you're better off putting your money into an investment than you are paying off a debt with a low interest rate, if that makes any sense. So... <clears throat> So here's our scenario, $5,000 in student loans, we're paying 200 bucks a month, and it's 8% interest rate. We don't like that, we wanna pay down fast, okay? So let's say you got a credit card with a $2,500 limit on it, and they sent you a thing that says 0% interest for like first 11 months, right? Well, let's say 12 months just to make it easy. It's, an, it's a year, they're gonna give you 0% interest for the year, and they usually charge you like a 3% charge to finance that so if you're um, financing like if you if you put 2500 bucks on it let me get the calculator out here here real quick they're going to charge you 75 dollars right now to do that okay but then there's zero percent interest after that so it's like over that year you only paid three percent on that full charge so would you rather pay three percent or eight percent right we'd rather pay three percent so we're going to take 2500 bucks and we're going to use that credit card deal and we're going to pay 75 bucks for that finance fee. Okay? So if we look at it, that $2,500, if we hadn't have paid that off, if we had not have paid that off up here um, and we just kept paying on our student loan, that $2,500 that's just sitting there in our principal, it would have cost us $200 to keep financing that through the student loan. So we saved ourselves 125 bucks over that year by going this route, if that makes sense. Okay. So we're going to do that. So we're going to be at 2575. That's what we're going to owe on the credit card. So we need to make a payment of about two, $215. So this is what we do. We divide that by 12 and it equals roughly $215. So we're going to pay off $215 a month of this credit card in order to make sure it hits a zero balance by the end of that year, okay? Because we don't want it to go into 22% interest, all right? So we're gonna have to pay 215 bucks a month, like clockwork every month, and pay this off completely in a year. And we wanna still make our payments on this. So yes, you do have to be able to afford that extra $215 a month payment in order to work that debt down faster. If you can't afford an extra 215 bucks a month, then you shouldn't be doing this. But I would challenge you to look at what you're spending money on. If you watch my home bud budgeting video, which I'll have a link below for that, if you look at what you're spending money on, I guarantee you can save 215 bucks a month because we go, we go to Starbucks every day and we spend four bucks on a cup of coffee. Or worse, we spend like $8 on some sort of Frappuccino thing that's filled with sugar. Um, so if you look at like you're spending, let's say you're spending five bucks a day on coffee, uh, five days a week, there's four weeks in a month. That's a hundred bucks a month right there. Stop drinking coffee at Starbucks. Just buy a, a, a gallon of Folgers and make it a, at home. 
for 25 cents or 20 cents a cup. So with these paired up together then, we'll have this completely paid off and now we're only, we're only gonna owe 2,500 on this now because we paid down that principal. By the end of the year, this is gonna be gone. This will be to zero and this will be pretty close to zero, I would bet. Like you might still owe like 750 or a thousand bucks on it. And then the next year it would be paid off in full if you didn't do this again. So in the next year, let's say you owe a thousand dollars still. So you owe a thousand dollars, you have this paid off, you're gonna get a credit card thing that, again that says, hey, just finance this for 3%, right? So then you might put 500 bucks on here. Well, you, you, don't, you probably wouldn't even need to do it at that, that, that point because if you're making, if you start making $415 payments on that, you're gonna pay it off very quickly. But in any case, you could do it again. Like if you look at a bigger loan, you could do it again and again and again and pay that big loan down super fast because you're eating up that principal quicker and you have a lower interest rate on it when you do it. So I hope that made sense. Look at doing this. Um, the, and, and you can like, there's tricks that you can do. Like if you have a credit card with a high balance and you're paying high interest on it, if you have another credit card, they give you a, a, an offer like that. You can pay off the one credit card with the other credit card and now you don't have that high interest rate anymore for a year, okay? So you can do, use it to pay off debt like that. You can use it to pay off student loans. You can use, use it to pay down your mortgage or whatever. So use debt to your advantage. Stop using it as a consumer because that's how you stay a slave to the system. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe below. Hit the notification bell. Find a whole bunch of links below for stuff that you may be interested in. And we'll see you again. Thank you.